let's say I only have three customers I greet in a week, I have to make the most of those three customers that I meet because right. there's not people really shopping nowadays. Right. They're just kind of trying to hide everything they have, store all the money that they get. They're not looking to go out and spend because everything's so expensive nowadays. Wow. It's Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. Well, everything looks back to normal. Markets across the board had a huge rally today. Uh, Dow Jones up over 600 points. Crypto's back up. Everything seems back to normal. Everybody rejoicing. Uh, we will see how long this rally lasts. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But no matter what happens this week or next week in these markets, there is something extremely wrong with this economy. This economy looks a lot different than the stock market looked today, that's for sure. Uh, I did a, a, a video today walking uh, a, a car lot, and I'm going to put uh, that clip on this video, so make sure you stay tuned and uh, watch the rest of this video. But Walking the car lot this morning over at Ford while I was having a vehicle serviced, uh, something is very wrong. There are no cars. Uh, there basically is not even any work because the salespeople have nothing to sell. You look at affordability. You look at uh, the amount of financing people are doing. I, I interviewed one of the salespeople over there who I'd met about a year ago. And uh, it's a really good interview. He's probably about 25 years old. His name's Wilson, really nice guy. And uh, he was very, very honest with me, uh, with his perception of things. And I think it's going to be uh, very interesting uh, for all of you to watch. So make sure you stay to the conclusion of this video and watch it, watch the interview. And just look uh, at, at the video I shot of the car lot. Most of you drive by, you've seen the car lots, you know what's going on. But it is a real eerie feeling. And, and and no matter what the stock market does, the economy has collapsed. And we are watching people going further into debt and buying a car today, the amount of debt that people are acquiring to buy a car. Yes, there are people that can afford to buy a car. And yes, there are a lot of people uh, who are living paycheck to paycheck, credit card to credit card, buying cars uh, who are going to get themselves into very, very big trouble. And there's millions of people right now in very big trouble because they went out and bought a car. The repo market is exploding. Um, and, and just further, uh, in regards to this economy, further deterioration, you, you, you just saw 10,000 flights canceled over the weekend. And so we see the Dow Jones, we see markets across the board up today. What was the good news? Somebody explained to me uh, what rallied these markets? What was the great news? Because I walked a car lot this morning and all the car lots in this area look the same. Uh, nobody's out there kicking tires. Nobody's out there looking at these cars. Uh, there, there's just not a lot of buyers. There's not a lot of inventory. It's a disaster. Then you look at this weekend, 10,000 flights canceled. You can't even book a flight in the US now and get to point, you know, from point A to point B without probably a cancellation or some sort of uh, uh, disaster taking place flying today. Um, you, you'll be rerouted, your flight will be canceled. Uh, there are no pilots apparently now. It's just unbelievable. So uh, the car lots are a disaster. Getting on a, a, a plane is a disaster. Uh, we look at Elon Musk, the news coming out today that uh, he's going to lay off three and a half percent of Tesla. Market's up today. I guess this is all great news. Um, I talked to a buddy last night and he uh, told me that his friends in, in, in the building business, that contractors are becoming delinquent. They're not paying their bills. They're falling 30, 60 plus days behind. So if a contractor uh, orders lumber, uh, windows, doors, garage doors, whatever, the suppliers are not getting paid. So this is uh, going to be more problems, and it's just another telltale sign of what's happening in the real economy. Uh, I'm going to share a couple articles before I get into this clip walking uh, the car lot uh, this morning uh, with Wilson. Check it out. It, it, it's just 
amazing to see Carlotts just a complete ghost town now. Like the, the money from a year ago completely vacuumed out of the economy. Where did all the money go? Well, all the government money came to an end and now people aren't buying cars, people are getting laid off. Uh, people cannot even afford the gasoline to put in the cars that they have right now. Again, we are just watching a chaotic uh, a disaster uh, with this economy. Elon Musk clarifies Tesla will lay off 3.5% of total workforce as ex-employees sue company. Again, markets up, 10,000 flights canceled over the weekend. Home sales, we'll talk about that too, plummet. And yet stock market up today, go and figure. Isn't that unbelievable? 10% uh, of salaried workers uh, uh, at Tesla are going to be laid off. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. And now hourly workers will be laid off. Another article from CNBC, sales of existing homes fell in May and more declines are expected. Today, the 30 year sitting at about 6%. Sales of existing homes in May dropped 3.4%. This is the weakest reading since June of 2020. Markets up today. Prepare for further declines in housing, in auto sales, you name it. Restaurants, retail, everything is gonna get beaten down here. Sales in housing were 8.6% lower than in May of 2021. April, April's numbers were also revised lower. Uh, this coming from the Orange County Register uh, in Orange County, California. Orange County home, home sales tumble, get this, 24%. Now remember, Orange County uh, is historically, historically one of the hottest housing markets in the United States. Home sales tumble 24% as house payments surge 46%. This according to the Orange County Register. How in the world are people going to continue to live? How are people going to maintain this middle or upper middle class uh, standard of living? Please, somebody tell me. Existing home sales we're down 21% in Orange County. New home sales were down 41% in Orange County. These are absolutely horrific numbers. Listings in the Inland Empire, a little bit more inland, uh, are up, get this, 52% in the 12 months ended in May. And we keep hearing that there's no inventory. Well, I can tell you in Southern California, inventory is beginning to soar. LA County inventory is up 5%. That number is going to go up. And in the article, it broke down the average mortgage payment uh, in some of the counties here in Southern California. The average mortgage payment in Orange County right now today is $4,423. In LA, it's $3,607. Riverside County, $2,510 in San Bernardino, $2,181 per month. That's the average mortgage payment in these counties in Southern California. I have no idea how people are doing it. Uh, we are going to see major uh, fragmentation, fallout, call it whatever you want uh, from, from this economy and what's happening right now. You know as well as I do, people are eating up their savings, they're getting personal loans. Uh, they're, they're using up their cash out refis. They're running up the credit cards. And of course, there'll be people out there saying, well, people are using their credit cards because they want the points. No, people are using their credit cards uh, to pay for food, to pay for housing. Uh, they're pulling cash advances out, using cards, doing balance transfers now. Uh, this is really getting very, very concerning. Housing is, become, is becoming uh, unglued right now. We are beginning to see major cracks forming in the housing market. I believe we are going to see a major housing crash. Imagine the fallout uh, that this economy has caused and how it's going to affect housing and the amount of layoffs that are coming to the US economy and the uh, average worker here in, in America. Layoffs and the cash flow, uh, the spiraling, inflation, cost of living, gasoline, food, all of it, gonna put huge, huge pressure on homeowners. You're gonna see people fold under the pressure. They're gonna have no other choice but to sell. We're gonna to continue to see inventory soar. It's going to climb. And all this at some point is gonna to come to a major head and pop. 
there's just too much pressure in the housing market. Prices are too high. The rental market, everything is too high. We need a huge, huge correction. We need a crash, ladies and gentlemen, to shake all this out. This is this just cannot go on. The average person cannot be paying $2,500 or $4,500 a month for rent, let alone $4,000 a month in a mortgage payment. Uh, they just cannot do it. People are barely hanging on. So I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Stay tuned. I'm gonna show you the clip from this morning as I'm walking the car lot with Wilson and getting his feedback of what's happening in the real economy as the markets rally today, as the Dow Jones closes up more than 600 points. I'm gonna to talk to somebody who sells cars and he's gonna give us his feedback on what he's seeing with his clientele, uh, what buyers of new and used cars uh, are telling him, uh, what kind of financing these people are taking on, what kind of debt they're taking on, and, and what he sees happening right now. As the Dow Jones up over 600 points today and markets across the board up based on what? Where was the good news? What was the great news that rallied these markets today? I'll tell you this, the news on the car lots is not so promising. There is no good news, but that's reality. This is the real world. Um, we're seeing real, real pain uh, in the real economy, yet, we get more of this song and dance, more of these magic tricks and more of these illusions on Wall Street. It's almost funny watching what happened today on Wall Street, but it's not. It's really a travesty, the amount of deceit uh, that people are being fed in these markets, uh, the, the amount of manipulation that's taking place, and people making life-altering financial decisions based on what's happening uh, in these markets. They're being lied to. The whole thing is a fraud. It's a Ponzi scheme. And because the market was up today, many people will begin to get complacent. Oh, uh, my, my 401k came back a little bit today. Oh, the cryptos came back a little bit today. We'll see how long it lasts, but it doesn't even matter. The reality of it is the economy is done. The economy has already collapsed and people are suffering. People cannot pay their bills. They're having their cars repossessed. They're defaulting on their homes right now. The retailers are in trouble. The restaurants are in trouble. The car lots are in trouble, yet, the markets are up today. Who cares? Did the markets going up today help you whatsoever? Did it help you pay your bills? Did it really help you any way? Did it do anything positive for you today? Um, the, the, the question you should be asking yourself is, are you going to have a job tomorrow? E are your wages going to keep up with inflation? Are you gonna to continue to live paycheck to paycheck? Uh, I, I mean, where is this all going? And now we're watching the housing market begin to break apart. So stay tuned, check out uh, this interview, check out the car lot, it's pretty interesting. And as always, I look very, very forward to talking with all of you very, very soon. Hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars GT five hundred. Okay, so Mustang GT now sixty two thousand dollars. So just talking to the salesman on this car and you're looking at about 70,000 uh, out the door on this car, tax title and all the fees, 70,000 plus now for a Mustang GT. How much? 82 for this one. All right, this one's got some upgrades. It's a Bronco, 82,000 plus tax title, all that good stuff. You're over 90,000. Over yeah, over 90 grand out the door on a Bronco. And you said you got about eight of these, eight, eight Broncos? Yeah, yeah. So two dealers, only eight Broncos. Uh, pretty cool. So Wilson uh, was saying that between the two dealerships, only eight Broncos. This one's gonna cost you, as I said, uh, over $90,000 out the door. Here's another one right here. Is that a wrap or is that paint? It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah, throwback. Okay. And how much is this one running? 66. 66, so another 10, about 76,000 out the door. 
this one. And they only had one Mustang GT and one GT500, which that's not uncommon, but one Mustang GT on the entire lot here. It, it's shocking to uh, see what's happening in the uh, price of, of vehicles today. So as we step out here to the lot, everything under the tent are used cars. Um, very, very few new cars that should be parked right out here and in, under those tents, but it's all used cars. So just uh, made a stop here. My buddy Wilson uh, is a salesman here. And uh, so we check out, see what's going on here. But it's really uh, crazy to see auto prices uh, and the inventory of, of, of these lots now, because it's not just Ford. You can go down to Toyota. Toyota's literally empty, but GM, Jeep, Chrysler, it, it's just, it's unbelievable. So I'm, I'm here with my buddy uh, Wilson. And I just asked him, like, what's he seeing? Uh, has he seen a change in his clientele with the buyers? And and you were saying, Wilson? Yeah, I think I'd really just have to say it's just like people are just watching their money a lot more nowadays. It's like they don't have all this money coming in and with gas more expensive and really everything more expensive. They don't have the money to put down money towards a car or they have to stretch out a loan. And it's just like... So how... And now we're talking about the loans. What are they stretching loans for now? like 84 84 months usually like most of the time it's 72 but we have to go to 84 sometimes 84. just to get it into that payment range for them to afford it wow so think about that right now to the average person i want you to think about that 84 months on a car loan this is why i'm completely against debt because you know i was just saying you know if you're paying seven dollars for a gallon of gas i'm saying this to wilson seven dollars for a gallon of gas you're driving 50 100 miles one way to work this is going to really start taking a toll on people and wilson uh, do people acknowledge that it's the gas prices, it's the food prices? People like kind of, kind of, him and Han a little mm -hmm. bit negative on, on about what they're paying for expenses. Yeah, that's why like people go for like the Teslas, for instance, which we like have them right there, or the Machis, which is a new hot car. Like they don't really go for like trucks. Like now we have a good lineup of trucks, and that they just can't afford the gas, so they just yeah. Don't. We'll walk over and check those out. They just now, turn their head towards. If somebody wants to come out here, they're in the Palm Springs area, mm -hmm. and they they want to buy a new car, they want to buy a Ford. I think Ford's got a good product. How do they get a hold of you? But they just um they can call, ask for Wilson, just hit me up. Fiesta and, Ford. Fiesta Ford. Wilson Pinkstaff. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Paul, and we're this is uh this location is India, India, India it's California. Right, right close to Palm Desert, the border of Palm Desert, yes, sir. right in India. So you can call Wilson over here at Fiesta Ford. Um, so here, this is now, what are we looking at here? This is the Maki Mach -E Performance. Okay, how are these selling? These and how are, much is this first? This one is used, so current market value for these is like $84,000. $84,000? You gotta be kidding me. $84,000. And that's if you can even find one of these. The GT Performance is like, my God, this is the first one I've seen since working here. Wow, let's, uh, we'll get a little shot of it. Wow, I, I I can't even imagine that. <sighs> wow. What about um, Wilson? What about people's credit? Are you seeing any issues when people come in to qualify for a loan? Credit issues? Oh, for sure. What, yeah, what? credits. Just, I think it's just the people. They just like you're saying. They just pile up debt and then don't pay it off, or they couldn't afford it, so then they get a repo, and it's just and they, they try to come in here and buy a car, like a used car with a thousand miles, yeah, like a bunch of miles on it. And it's just like, that's just unrealistic. What about repos? Is there any talk of repos? I, I I have a couple friends who have associates in the repo business. They said it's booming. Oh, yeah. It's just, I think it's because like the gas is so expensive. Yeah. So they don't have that extra money for a car payment. Right. And plus the insurance for it. Yeah. Or they got some DUI. And it's just like, it's just ridiculous. Right wow. Now. Wow. So interesting. So now we'll walk over and look at trucks. So here we are. These are all new pickup trucks, all new Fords right here. And Wilson wanted to uh, point out, I don't know if you can see it. I can zoom in, I guess. All right, right there, Wilson? Yes, sir. Okay, that used to be filled with trucks. And it goes all the way back there. All the way back. Like so that's literally like almost a quarter mile. 
that's a, like probably a good eighth of a mile long. 100 plus F-150s, like 50 plus F-250s, everything. And so what what is the issue now that we're not seeing the, these lots full? Is it the chip issue? It's the chip issue and then plus this like parts issue. So parts. Like they can't get the parts for it. So, so let's talk about that really quick because yeah. you're, the, you're the pro here. Parts, what kind of part shortages are we seeing now here at Ford? This American company, we're not talking Audi, Mercedes or BMW, yeah. we're talking American Ford. What kind of part issues are you running into? Really like everything, like there's a there's tire, like you, I, I tried getting new tires for my, my Camaro and I had to wait like a month just to get them wow. available to get them. So it's tires, it's everything. And Alternators? Now, everything. And now even car companies are gonna start producing cars with missing features that their car's supposed to come wow. with just to get production out there. So like if they have adaptive cruise control, now the car won't have that just to get production out there so people can buy cars again. So with the limited inventory now, this has got to take a toll on you guys. Um, you guys have a huge overhead here. I drive by here every day. Um, the overhead's huge. I mean, how difficult is it now to be in this business when you can't get parts and you have a limited inventory of autos to sell where prices are skyrocketing? It's tough. I really just think you have to make the, like in sales, you just have to make the biggest opportunity of what you're given. So like, if let's say I only have three customers I greet in a week, I have to make the most of those three customers that I meet because right. there's not people really shopping nowadays. Right. They're just kind of trying to hide everything they have, store all the money that they get. They're not looking to go out and spend because everything's so expensive nowadays. Wow. Let's walk over here real quick. And remember, Wilson's a good guy. If you need a Ford, uh, come over to Fiesta Ford here in Indio, and we're gonna walk over to the used car lot. This seems like it's it's growing. Like I'm seeing more used cars coming on the market. More used cars than new cars for sure. So, are prices? Are you seeing prices coming down? Have they kind of leveled out? What do you see in the uh, used car market now? I'd say used cars are still just as expensive as they were as of last year but the new cars i'd say like for markups of broncos and stuff since there's more out there the bronco hype is starting to die down so mm. the, the price of those are going down a little do, bit do you think that in a lot of the auto market there was a lot of fomo the fear of missing out like i better get a car right now they're so hard to get and do you think that these lots are going to get filled again that the chip shortage will eventually um get taken care of and these lots will be full again. Uh, what, what, I think they will get full again just because they're gonna start producing cars with the missing features. Mm -hmm. And then really, really what their plan is with those car manufacturers is once they sell the car to you and those chips become available, yeah. you can bring in for service, they'll install the chips, so then that feature will then be available. So my concern is this stuff, this economy keeps getting worse mm -hmm. and these lots fill up and you have less qualified buyers as people are, we're gonna see layoffs, we're gonna see credit issues. Uh, we're going to see a lot of financial issues with people and these lots fill up a lot of cars mm -hmm. do you believe i i i i uh, really do believe that we must see price prices come down uh because yeah, we're going to have less, I think they, less the buyers. government allowed the interest rates to go back up yeah so the, the prices will just they'll have to come down they'll have to come down because yeah, then people won't be buying and then we'll be just stuck with all these cars yeah, you won't so know where to put them we'll have to sell something and it was it, it wasn't that long ago and wilson i don't know if you remember this but it was probably about two years ago remember that there's a car lot, like kind of like a, a, a bullpen down about a mile from here where all the dealers would put all their cars. Oh, that was little, yeah, lot. oh, yeah. that was for a unit, Honda. Honda, yeah. And there was a time where there were so many cars on these lots that the dealers didn't know where. I mean, they were putting, yeah. leaving them in Long Beach off the boats. They they didn't know yeah, where to like put them. over in La Quinta for Chevy, they'd be parking in like the Walmart parking lot and yeah. they paid to just right, put right. cars there. Right. And now they're, they're empty. We could see that again. Possibly. So yeah. we could see, uh, as I've said, a deflationary period where Gas goes up, food's going up, certain things are going up, but we're gonna see car prices and big screens and phones and other certain houses. items go down. Houses, you know, things we don't really need will go down. The things that we really do need will go up. Um, are people keeping their their older cars longer? I would say so. I'd say mo a good percentage of our trade-ins mm -hmm. are older cars with a lot of miles. Yeah, now that's another thing that, you, that these dealers, I don't know about Fiesta Ford, but I know CarMax, I just bought a Camry, okay. uh, 2000, uh, year 2000, 200,000 miles, $1,500. It was in pretty good shape. I couldn't wow. say no. But um, CarMax was going to buy that car for, for more than I was offering it. But a couple years ago, you guys wouldn't take a used car older than three, four, five years old? Yeah. 
just because and then now I think a lot of people also come in asking for like just a cheap car just to pay cash for what's the oldest car people. you guys will, will take I'd say if you had like a early 2000s so 20 yeah. years old yeah wow that's unheard of okay I like one 2008 Lexus I think and it has like over a hundred and uh, hundred and sixty thousand miles and that's a car you guys wouldn't touch a couple years ago with a 10-foot pole probably not because we'd have just right. unlimited no inventory or right. brand new so right. we wouldn't even touch it so now uh, let's talk about what we've got here we got a th this is all used cars all used. so I'll, I'll just shoot right over here so a majority of the lot now is used cars and most majority. this is and a majority are, are small suvs and trucks truck yeah truck prices have gone because since we don't have any brand new trucks yeah we'll just do whatever we can to just get the used trucks that we can to sell what's happening in the truck market now with seven dollar gas out here in california it's it's dropped significantly so let's talk about uh, from january to now how much do you think it's dropped i'd say it's dropped a good like probably 20 percent of people are coming here most people are coming here just looking for a car that's good on gas or electric or hybrid or something like that yeah that's why like we have a all electric f-150 the the lightning coming out okay so people are just asking for those anything hybrid or electric related that's what right. most people come and ask for. now explain something to me we're here in the palm springs area coachella valley the so, desert brownouts blackouts yep. i mean if half of this town not even half this town but if we were plugging in cars there's no way we would have power in our homes oh, no. we would not have air conditioning there's no way the grid can handle all this no and i i think that, that that's going to end bad too and i think i heard that california was closing down their last nuclear plant or something like that okay and uh, by 2035 it's supposed to just be selling all electric cars so where's all this power for electric cars going to come from i have no idea because I've, I've heard that like since we're supposed to be selling all electric and since you're gonna have to have all these new plug-in outlets yeah then to power the homes and yeah. lights and everything yeah. with electric cars we're gonna have to start burning fossil fuels again to just have the power to to provide that yeah so that's a lot of fossil fuel and you want to talk about something being really bad for the environment uh to mine the lithium the cobalt and all these other uh, minerals that you need to make batteries extremely bad for the environment and then you, all, all the oil and coal that you're going to need to produce the electricity on top of this and then to dispose of all this mm -hmm. i remember mining is a very very dirty dirty business ladies and gentlemen but uh in behind you this uh the this was where a lot of the new cars were right here yep and this yeah, is this parking lot wasn't as big as it, as it is now okay there used to be new cars parked here and now it's even all this space where the Mach-E is yeah. it used to be full of brand new cars. There'd be like six right there, then there'd be five over there. And what about the big um, F-250s, F-350s? Where are they at? We have one, two, two or three brand new ones new? On, on our lot. Let's take a look at them. Yeah. So we got a big uh, 6.7 liter Super Duty F-250. Big old diesel. And now you got to ask yourself, seven dollars plus for a gallon of diesel. Who in the world is buying a truck like this now? And this thing's probably over eighty, ninety thousand dollars. Very, very interesting. So, getting back to the F two fifty here, this big uh, power stroke diesel. Where do you see this market going in the next twelve months? I still think it's going to be a very relevant relevant market for these things like because people come and asking for it because they need it for businesses right. they need it for towing they need it for like people aren't going to stop their lives just because of the gas like there's still going to be people that come out of the market some will stop their lives because the gas will are going to be forced lives, to there's still going to be the people that, right, that they, need a truck like this um but how how and you know this as good as anybody how many people bought these trucks i mean they're cool they look cool but how many people just bought them to look cool drive them around uh just just for the um the look or the status that never towed towed anything just had to have a truck those people are, say a lot of like young business owners yeah i'm proud to say because they own a construction business yeah. or they own landscaping or whatever it right. is and they just buy and they lift it and yeah. they look cool and they don't use it for what it's made for right so it's just and now that person's going okay seven plus dollars for, for diesel maybe i'm going to downsize probably and then they come down to like an f-150 right and so anything else um 
you want to you want to close with in regards to the auto market? Um, anything you want to say out there? A lot of people watching today. A lot of people uh, just want to pick your brain. What you see? Um, I think if you have a trade in, if you're looking to get a new car and you happen to own it, it'd be a good time to come on in because you have a lot more value in that car than you did three four years ago. Yeah. But if you're not and you have high miles, you're still paying it off. I'd say just wait and wait till kind of see what everything happens in the economy and everything, and then kind of see where your assets are and money and go from there. What about leases? Leases, I you can do it, but I would not suggest it because it's just as much as pretty much purchasing a car nowadays. Yeah, okay, interesting. Because leases would work if you had a bunch of the same cars, Yeah. so then we could just give it out for the 300, 400, what people would think leases are for, right? Mm. But nowadays, since we have two of those cars, it might as well just buy it buy because it. you have to return it anyway. So again, if anybody wants to get a hold of you here at Fiesta Ford, Indio, California. Indio, California, Wilson, Wilson Pink Staff, just call me. My phone number is 760-413-1960. If you have any questions or anything you need, hit me up. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Really appreciate it, Wilson. So uh, that's it. We'll close it up. But uh, that's Fiesta Ford today. Uh, it's a good dealership. Uh, I actually have uh, one of my cars serviced here. And they're always very, very professional. There it is. But uh, it's really unbelievable to see where this has all come really in the last uh, year and what uh, has really escalated uh, in the last few months in this economy. It's just really, I don't even know what to say, a loss for words. And, you know, just with everything that's happening every day in this economy, uh, it just boggles your mind and literally every day I'm at a loss for words. I don't even know how to explain it. I've never seen anything like this. And I know people that run dealerships like this and businesses, they, they don't even know what to say. I think a lot of people are losing hope in our leadership and do not know uh, where this is all going to go. We are no doubt in uncharted waters. And uh, be very, very careful, cautious with your money, ladies and gentlemen. Don't buy things you don't need. Buy things you do need. And uh, do not get yourself... Uh, over leverage into eight year car payments. You know, do whatever you can if you're gonna finance something to put the most down or pay cash. Uh, that Camry, $1,500, no car payment. It's gonna run for at least another 100,000 miles, low maintenance, low insurance. If you have the means and ability to buy a new car and you can slap down a huge down payment or pay cash for it, then go, go for it by all means. I know that there is money out there. There are still people doing very, very good out there. And if you can uh, take, you know, take care uh, of a car payment or, or pay cash for a car, then do it. You can afford it. If you can't, buy something used, buy something below your means right now because you do not know what's going to happen tomorrow.